uh, one of the local wild swimmers comes swimming out with this on her head doing breaststroke. I look down and it's just piping off her head. Guys, coming to you from Mulliken Tile, which is right about here, which is officially the halfway point of the Great British Swim. That feels incredible to say, only because me and Matt were saying it's now more efficient for us to go all the way around and back to Margate this way than it is this way. So essentially, we're now counting down the days, we're not counting up. I think when Ross and I first met, he was going, oh yeah, I'm going to swim around Great Britain, and I was thinking, right, um, that's good, but it's going to take a bit of heart. And in my mind, I had uh, headlands like this one. I was thinking, ooh, Malo Kintyre in a southwest gale, that's going to be savage. So here we are a few months later, and um, here he is! Yes! Yes! <laughs> in psychological terms, you know, there was Land's End was a massive hurdle. That was kind of like, okay, we're quarter of the way there. But yeah, getting around this one, this pretty much marks the halfway mark in my mind. So how does it feel, Mr. Edgley? Weird. <laughs> we were just saying that, weren't we, Matt? <laughs> that we've been talking about Mullican Tide like since, oh my God, since Sidmouth, since Lime Bay. And then, you know, yesterday, um, our first proper gale of the, um, yeah. of the trip, you know, gale force, severe gale force nine in the forecast. We were to scuttle off to hide for a night. And, um, and then this morning it was kind of completely shrouded in mist. And so, uh, for it to clear like this and then bright sunshine all day and then this beautiful evening it's just like okay there's your reward for sticking it, it out like mate a yeah it, has, it does feel R like a reward richly deserved it has to be said it's but that's what it feels like on the whole great british swim it just feels like just getting slammed by wind and waves and we were just seeking refuge out in the harbor and then we've kind of come out today for right we need to get to mullican tire we need to get to halfway and in a weird way Clouds are cleared, sunshine's come out. It's like somebody's going, there you go. Well done, guys. Well done. You! Mullican tire. For those who tuned in last week, you'll know we spoke an awful lot all around mental fortitude and these tips, techniques, and strategies that you can use to deal with hardship. Which is why this week, it only made logical sense to address the physical adaptations and changes that are happening to my body during the Great British Swim. This starts, of course, with a fan favorite, Rhino Neck. Rhino Neck's back. Um, I thought I'd left him way back at Land's End, but it appears he's made another appearance in Scotland. But there is hope. And me and Matt as well were, were so much quicker at identifying before it got worse. So we were addressing wounds, changing swimming technique, and fingers crossed, touch wood, I think we're over it. I think. Of course, related to Rhino Neck is Salt Tongue, which is actually healing. Take a peek. Basically, we've become foremost experts in dealing with salt tongue. We've got homemade mouthwashes. We'll lube up the inside of my mouth with, with all sorts of coconut oil. And again, fingers crossed, I think we're on top of it. Next, we can't talk about physical adaptations without talking about my old foe, the jellyfish. Especially because in Scotland, they're bigger. They're bigger and hentsher. Um, how my body has changed to this is really threefold. Number one, the armoured, fortified beard. Uh, genuinely, the other day, jellyfish, schmack, bounced straight off it. Rather than just teabagging, he just kind of ricocheted off either side. So it's still not fully grown yet, but it's getting there. Number two, I've developed really good peripheral vision. When I'm swimming, if a jellyfish is coming either side or straight on, I can now identify where he is and where his tentacles are. So peripheral vision. Prevention is better than cure. And if I see him coming, I'll give him a wide berth. Finally, jellyfish immunity. Now, this isn't an exact science. It's more a theory that me and the team are, are throwing around. And I don't really want to test this theory by going and rubbing my face in a load of jellyfish. But when I've been stung the last few times in Scotland, it's just hurt. It hasn't caused itching or my airways to kind of block up or cause me to be dizzy. It's just painful. So there's a theory that you develop an immunity to it after so many stings. I don't want to test this, just putting it out there. Next up, swimming techers and biomechanics.
basically it's my job throughout the 100 days and beyond to swim as efficiently as possible for as long as possible. And to do this, I'll switch up my swimming technique depending on whether I've got waves, currents, a ferry chasing after me, or I'm about to swim headfirst into a whirlpool. Uh, a lot of people will notice when I'm swimming, quite often I don't actually kick my legs. That's because I actually hold quite a lot of fat around my lower body and on my legs, which means it's actually quite buoyant. And because kicking actually only counts for 10% overall propulsion, my job is to conserve as much energy as possible. And so if I don't kick my legs for 90% of the time, it's just this kind of lazy, cumbersome technique. I've often said, I'm not a dolphin, I'm not a shark, it's not pretty to look at, I'm more like a whale. And I'll just slowly make my way all around Coast of Great Britain. And finally, I am chubbier with a little pudding belly, which means one, I'm better at cuddling, but two, I'm more resilient to the cold as well, which is a pretty simple science. More body fat means more insulation. Speaking of the cold, it's time to swim. completely honest with you I love Scotland I don't think I'm gonna come back down the other side I might just stay up in this region uh, main reasons being scenery is just stunning Scotland wins sunsets we had some amazing ones down in Cornwall it's just just insanely stunning uh, Irish Sea as well just spoilt us the water was kind of this turquoise color take a bow Scotland we had one the other day and, and the whole sea kind of lit up. It was this kind of red sky and, and the sea was red and, and the sky was red. And my first swim that's kind of properly in Scotland, it's just crazy. I'm not gonna lie, the water is best described as fresh. Can't feel your face after the first hour. Lips are just blue and numb, but it's Scotland, so you don't mind. It's a very weird dilemma to be in. You know that you can't experience the beauty of Scotland without freezing your lips. But the main reason I'm not leaving Scotland is because of the people. The people come bearing cake. Yes. So I'm sleeping, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and Iona, one of the local wild swimmers, comes swimming out with this on her head, doing breaststroke. And then I just hear, excuse me, Ross, I brought you some cake. I look down and it's just piping off her head. So she came on board, we had a chat, and um, she gave me cake. And not just any cake as well, it's so dense. And it's still warm. Oh, it smells amazing, check this. Mm. So yeah, Scotland, take a bow. Scenery, the people, and your cakes. So that's it for this week, guys. We are now well and truly on our way into Scotland. Uh, I just want to take a very quick moment just because the other day I posted some pictures on my Instagram and I got loads of really, really nice messages just saying, am I okay? And, and you know, am I being well looked after? Just because I did look pretty hairy and haggard. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was after, uh, I think it was a 14 mile swim, goggle marks, just zinc paint all around me. And yeah, like the truth is, I'm not going to win any beauty pageants this summer. That is true. And I've made peace with that fact. But um, it, it's kind of what's needed for the Great British Swim. My face is being slowly eroded by jellyfish and salt water, but I'm in high spirits and, and, and I am okay. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, it really does mean a lot. And, and your, your messages are always shouted across me while I'm swimming um, in the water. So it was, it was very, very sweet of you. And I just wanted to end by, by sort of expressing how grateful I am for that. But for now, all that's left to do is get out there and earn some cold, hard Scottish miles. This is the Great British Swim. I'm Ross Edgley, and I'll see you next week.